In Lesson 13.2 on Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation, we showed that the equation for our weight, which we know is mass times gravity, is really just a simplification of Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation. So what we've shown then is that g times m over r squared on the surface of the planet Earth is 9.8. Remember, we're taking Newton's universal law of gravitation, and we're showing that this part right here is equal to 9.8, which is g, which the force of gravity then, also known as our weight, equals mass times gravity. And you see that for pretty much anywhere we go on the surface of the Earth, the value of r does not change by very much percentage-wise. So whether we're standing on the top of Mount Everest or at the bottom of Death Valley, it's always very close to a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. However, if we go off the surface of the Earth, like up to the International Space Station, the value of r changes enough so that the value of g is considerably different than 9.8. This is back in chapter 5, and we talked about an inertial reference frame is one in which Newton's laws hold. For example, we can assume that the ground is an inertial frame provided we can neglect Earth's astronomical motions, such as its rotation. Now we're going to take into account these things. Let's make sure we understand the notations here. When we talk about g... That's going to be the actual acceleration that we measure of a falling object uh, at the surface of planet Earth. And A sub G will be the acceleration that is calculated with Newton's law of gravitation. However, any G value measured at a given location will differ from the A G value calculated with Newton's universal law of gravitation for that location for three reasons. Number one... Earth's mass is not distributed uniformly. Number two, Earth is not a perfect sphere. And number three, the Earth rotates. Because the measured value of g differs from the calculated value of ag, the same three reasons mean that the measured weight mg of a particle differs from the magnitude of the gravitational force on the particle as given to us by Newton's law of universal gravitation. Let's take a look at these reasons. The density of Earth varies radially as shown here in this figure. And the density of the crust, that's the outermost layer of the Earth, it varies from region to region over Earth's surface. Thus, G varies from region to region over the surface. The crust of Earth is too thin to show clearly on this graph. Number two, Earth is not a sphere. Earth is approximately an ellipsoid flattened at the poles and bulging at the equator. Its equatorial radius is greater than its polar radius by 21 kilometers. Thus, a point at the poles is closer to the dense core of Earth than is a point on the equator. This is one reason that the freefall acceleration g increases as one proceeds at sea level from the equator toward either pole. And the last reason, Earth is rotating. The rotation axis runs through the north and south poles of Earth. An object located at Earth's surface anywhere except at those poles must rotate in a circle about the rotation axis and thus must have a centripetal acceleration directed toward the center of the circle. This centripetal acceleration requires a centripetal net force that is also directed towards the center. To see how Earth's rotation causes the measured value of g to differ from the calculated value of ag, let's analyze a simple situation in which a crate of mass m is on a scale at the equator. So let's start with a force diagram. Here's our crate on the surface of the Earth, and we know that there must be a net centripetal force acting on it because it's moving in a circle as the Earth rotates. So the sum of the normal force, which points away from the center of the Earth, and the gravitational force, which points towards the center of the Earth, the sum of those two will be the centripetal force. So the sum of my centripetal forces is equal to 
we, we're used to saying mv squared over r for uh, mass times centripetal acceleration. But don't forget, it's also equal to mass times r times omega squared, where omega is the angular velocity and r is the radius of the curvature. Okay, so towards the center of the circle will be the positive direction. So gravitational force is positive. Away from the center is negative. The normal force, there's my sum of forces. What is the normal force? Well, when you stand on a scale and read your weight, that's what you're measuring, the normal force. So I'm going to move this to the other side and call it my measured weight. And then I'll move this m omega squared r to the left side of the equation. My measured weight, I know, is mass times the acceleration of gravity as measured on, in that region. So I'll call the measured weight mg. You see every term has an m, so it cancels out. And I'm left with this equation here that is telling me the calculated gravitational acceleration minus the centripetal acceleration is equal to the actual acceleration. So as we expect, it's going to be a little bit less, right? You can think of the rotation of the Earth as trying to spin you off the Earth so your weight is a little less than it would be if the Earth wasn't rotating at all. And, and remember, our centripetal acceleration is omega squared times r. So that means when we're at the equator, we have the largest r. So this centripetal acceleration term is the biggest. The poles have the smallest r. That would be 0 at the pole. So this number is 0. So that means at the equator, we're going to have the lowest measured acceleration. And at the poles, we're going to have the greatest measured acceleration when we analyze just the rotation of the Earth.